Welcome to our craft along. Combined with the shack, of course, and a little bit early to the party, it's six o'clock. My name's Barbara Gray uh, from Clarity here in the UK, and we're going to have a really lovely, cheeky little craft along together. So I hope that you're in the building with me. I know that our lovely Paul Church is here to keep you company and help you too. And we've got some really nice projects lined up. So my hope is that you've got everything that you need in front of you. We're going to keep it calm and quiet. We'll have a good time, okay? And um, let's do what we enjoy, shall we? Which is crafting. And my phone's pinging. So that tells me that I, I need to switch it to silent. There you go. I'm out of the office. Anyway, how are you? Is anybody there apart from myself? Good morning. Good morning. Now I've heard it all. Good morning. Good evening, Jane. Hang on. Yeah, it's definitely dark. <laughs> good evening, Jane. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Bev. Hi, Helen. Nice to have your company. Are we looking forward to this? Glynis, you're there too. Oh, it's nice to be surrounded by friends this evening. I can tell you. Sound is nice and clear. I'm so glad to hear that too. So let's have a look. It's six o'clock on the nose and we're going to be working. Let, let a few friends come in first. We're going to be, wow, there's already 90 of us. God, I tell you what, you're amazing, you guys. We're going to be working with those lovely twiggy stamps. Do you remember when we, uh, a couple of weeks ago, when it was children in need, and I said, wouldn't it be a great idea if we took what we, we doodled in the shack and turned them into stamps and groovy plates and then sold them for charity? And that's exactly what we've done. And um, actually, Paul was telling me we've done, we've sold, are you ready? So far, 126 complete sets. So that means that's um, the groovy plate and the stamp set and 103 stamp sets in addition and 48 groovy plates in addition. And my guess is that this evening we'll sell even more. And just to recap, we haven't shouted about it. We don't use it as a, as a marketing opportunity. This is just between us, okay? Um, but what we'll do is all profit. Clarity are not making any money with this, okay? All profit will go to children in need. And we're going to run this offer on these stamps and on this groovy plate right up until Big Ben bongs, till the 31st of December. There you go. So I think that's quite good, don't you? And the nice thing is that it's a collective. We've done it together. You give us the money. We make the stamps for you. We're even going to have a cheeky little craft along together um, using those stamps. Yeah, it's good energy. It's a win-win. It's a positive, isn't it? And it's creative crafting. All things that we love because we like giving. We're a nation of givers. There's no doubt about that too. So it's good to have your company. 119 people in the room and climbing. Ain't that lovely? So have you got your tea, your tea or your coffee or your tipple? Huh? And breathe. Cool, it has been a day. I can't. Do you know what, Bob? I don't need many of them. No, you don't, darling, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Life's too short. Okay, good. So... Shall we, have, shall we have a little look? I'm not in a rush today. I've already had my tea. I'm piling on the pounds. I don't know. I reckon I reckon it's that hibernation fat, don't you? Because I'm eating like a sparrow. I am eating like a sparrow and I'm piling on the weight. <laughs> I can hear Dave in the kitchen going, yeah, well, what sparrows do you know that eat cake and chocolate? <laughs> Oh, whatever. Right. Evening all. Shall we have a look at where we started this doodle? Because it's only been a couple of weeks. And what's really exciting, I think, as a, as a company is that you and I can hang out on a Monday morning at 10 o'clock on Facebook Live. We can doodle a couple of baubles. Obviously, I'm the bus driver. So I've done my homework, right? We do something really achievable, don't we? Let's get a piece of paper so I can show you. Yeah. So we doodle a couple of baubles. We doodle a couple of baubles. 
We even, look, we even take those baubles, them that are baubles, and we turn them into nice artwork. That was quite cool, wasn't it? Like that. Look, this is two of my Christmas cards here. I just haven't finished them yet. We use a stencil. And then on Monday, as if that weren't enough, we used um, we used those clever, um, what are they called? Uh, those nested thingies, the nested round ones. I have them here, these ones. We used these, didn't we, to, to make a, a garland as well. All clever stuff, really. We're very good, you know, I think, as a team. So we take that, we take all these ideas, we enjoy ourselves, and then, as if that weren't enough, bear with, we make a fantastic set of stamps with the help from Jazz at work, plus masks. There's masks here as well. There you go. So you get your masks as well. And this is, and then, uh, not only that, but we also make hang on a minute because i've got it all laid out ready to do the workshop um we make a, a a groovy plate as well there you go it's upside down and that was what we we sold and that's where we've done so that's 126 that's 226 there you go so that's 226 226 229 sets of stamps that we've sold. That's a lot of money. That's a couple of grand. And uh, 126, so 148, 160, over 170 of these as well. I reckon we deserve a pat on the back, people. And we're not finished yet. And so this evening, right, as a little pat on the back to us, us friends who have raised this money, we're going to... Um, we're going to make some cards. How's about that then? Okay, so put that to one side, just because in a minute I'm going to go. Where did I put it? <laughs> I put it here. Right. If if you see, if I if I start looking, I put it down here on this shelf. Okay. <laughs> what did you have for tea? Have you had your tea yet? I had salad. Oh no. <laughs> I had salads and coleslaw and a bit of chicken. It's not really salad and coleslaw and chicken weather, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Paul, will you do me a favour and put the link up for these lovely charitable Save the Children, uh, Children in Need, sorry, this one is, Children in Need. I stand corrected. Uh, this is for Children in Need. Okay, very worthy cause. If anybody hasn't got these stamps yet, what are you waiting for? Okay, so I thought what we could do, because now we've, we've, we, we're have going to do two projects, not too hard, right? Hands up who's got them, who's ready to go. First, let's do the stamp project, shall we? Okay, so the stamp project, just so you know, there was a download. It did tell you exactly what you need. It's quite straightforward. OK, um, the first thing we're going to need is the stamps. Well, actually, no. The first thing you're going to need is a piece of card. OK, so while I put that there and you can have a look at what you need, just in case you didn't get the download. I'm going to I'm going to. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm going to take my six by six and I'm going to cut it in into half. Okay, and that's going to be our starting place. Okay, that's the first thing we want to know. All right. So once you've got that and you've got the stamps, I've already mounted my stamps. Let me show you. So I put mine already on handles. I've got those two. Don't worry, I'm going to show you. I've mounted all mine. Look, so I can, I can use them. I've mounted the words as well. Okay, so I've got mine already on handles. There you go. There's my little set. And I can get this box out of the way. That'll be handy. I'm on telly on Sunday, you see. So 
I'm in the middle of prepping for TV, like right in the middle. <laughs> so I had to kind of sweep that to one side, sort this out, and then tomorrow I'll start again with that. Be all right. It'll be all right. Three to five, ding a ling a ling. Create and craft, don't forget. Now, let's have a look. We're going to use our stamps and the card. So once you've got that, really, we're off and running. And a bit of tracing paper if you've got it. You've got a bit of tracing paper as well. Good, but we don't need that quite yet. Okay. Right. So shall I show you the card? If I show you the card, then you'll know where we're headed. I think that's a good idea. So I'll keep the product there and I'll show you the card. You may have seen it already on the on the um on Facebook. So let's have a look. So you can see, if you look at this, you can see, right, so we've used an embedder. Or we've got a this is all one piece of card, by the way. Okay, so we've made a faux frame, I'll show you how to do that. We've got these two, we've got the piece at Christmas, we've got some lovely glitter. See the glitter? Look, let me hold it like that. There you go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Let's see if this camera, if this, yeah, there you go. Let's come in a bit closer. Let it focus, let it focus. There you go. So you can see what we're up to here, can't you? It's rather nice. Okay, so that's going to be our that's going to be our stamp project, and then when we've done the stamp project, if you fancy, we'll have a go at the groovy one as well. It's quite straightforward. Lots of little tricks and tips though in this, but you can see that the first thing we're going to need is that card. Okay, and then I've got a bit of companion paper. And that make that's nice too, isn't it? On light pink rather than that. I like that too. Go on, I know you're going to ask me, where did I get this from? Well, let's have a little competition, shall we? Let's have a cheeky little competition while we're here, okay? <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> you, you tell me where I found this companion paper, okay? What's the prize? You're brilliant, that's the prize. You're absolutely brilliant. Okay, let me show you the colours. <laughs> Ready? It's that colour on that side, and it's that colour on that side. Oh, no! Paul says it was on the ingredients list. Well, it says companion paper. Did you tell him then, Paul? Because <laughs> all I put was companion paper. <laughs> oh, Paul. You didn't give it away, did you? No mind. Okay. He gave the game away. Well, that was that competition blown then. <laughs> no worries. We all know you're brilliant anyway. So you want to tell me then, Paul? <laughs> now you've told the rest of the nation. How about telling me? <sighs> I tell you what, you can't get the staff nowadays, can you? <laughs> you watch, he'll flick off in a minute. He'll flick off his telephone, is what I said. Rainbow River, apparently. Rainbow River. Wonderful. Right, you ready? Get your tracing paper out and let's get started then. Stop larking about, Gray, or we'll be here all night. Okay. Let's get a piece of tracing paper out. And we'll use that as well. So have you got that ready? I need a piece. Okay. We're going to use that in a minute. Now let me get my head on so that I, I'm in the right, I'm in the right place. So we put that to one side. This is the first thing. Okay. Are you ready to rock and roll, friends? Sadly, Ma, Maggie, only watching tonight. Love your Christmas cactus. I know. Check this out. Hey, okay. ain't that a tree? I thought, I thought you'd like that. It's rather beautiful. And it's as nice at the back as it is from the front. Okay, let's have a look at this and then we'll get started. Okay, we'll put the, I think, I vote we put the embedder to work first. So let's get the embedder, put that to one side, and then we're going to take this one. 
that one. So this is a six by six cut in half, and then we're going to use that embedder, okay, the one that's there. And then we need a bit of low tack tape. This is this is on the front, isn't it? Okay, because what we want to do is make that faux that faux embedded look makes the card look more expensive. Remember, it's really easy to do. So we'll take a piece of low tack masking tape, and we'll pop this in place. Hang on, right. So we we'll pop that in place so it's not moving while we work. This should be all right, like so. Yeah, you cool with that? Do you think that'll hold it in place? Yeah, of course it will. Okay. So we've got that. Now, the other thing is that we, we need our tool, don't we? Our embossing tool. So grab yourself your embossing tool as well. Ah, there we are. Okay. And then we need a piece of paper or something underneath so that when we turn it, so we're going to flip this over now, right? And then we're going to feel where it is, right? So let's have a look. We're going to do this with our, can you see, with your thumb, like that, just get the edge going. If you struggle with your thumb, you know, you can always take something else, like something like this, anything. I've just grabbed what I can find. You see, and then you run that up the side and you can you can feel you just butt up with a with a anything that's got a nice edge like that. Right. And then all we're trying to do is find the. The side of the embedder before we actually use the tool. Got it. Oh, that's quite good. Right. So then you take your tool. Now, top tip, top tip, if you want to, I mean, I you don't need to. But one thing that does certainly, if you want to make the tool glide more easily, our tumble dryer sheet, you know what we use for the groovy? That may help. Okay, and then what you do is you take the number two tool, that's the one with the little ball at the end, and it also usually says number two there, right? Sorry, that sounded really sarcastic. It wasn't meant to be sarcastic at all. Okay, right. And then what we're going to do is just... Run the tool, dig in, right, when you get to the corner, just go around the corner gently and then dig in like that. And what you're doing is you're turning the, um, here we go, you're turning the paper rather than the, the card because then that way, one, if this is dirty, um, the white card is protected because obviously that's the front. And two, as you're turning, you're not you're not aggravating. You're not gonna the the embedder's not gonna move. Okay. So. And and just in case you've got the basic embedders, let me have a look. These ones, the ones that we started out with, the ones that aren't nested, the ones that haven't got whole apertures. The apertures are a whole other ball of wax, aren't they? But if you're wondering, all the sizes are different. So it's quite useful to have them all. Okay, so then I'll turn that over. And then when I lift this away, I've got a really cool, sharp embed there. Got it? So that's the first step. There, that wasn't too hard, was it? Right, tick that box. Okay. And I'm going to put this little fella, I don't think I need this now, I'm going to pop that in there again so I don't lose it. Right, trick number one. Right, let's have a look at the next thing. So the next thing we want to do is make an edge a little bit further in. So it looks like, I mean, at the end of the day, you could take a piece of card, a little bit bigger than that. I'd say four by four, say, right? And you could stick that on the, you could just do it separately and then pop it into the center like that. Do you see what I mean? I just thought it'd be nice to show you how to make um, a faux edge. But believe you me, you could take the other the other half of the six by six and cut it down. And then that way you just stick that on there. And that looks good too. Okay, so choices, choices here. Choices, choices. Let's stick to the plan 
and see, let's just stay on the actual artwork here. Right, so what we want to do, have you got a pencil and have you got a ruler? Well, hey, have you got a pencil and have you got a ruler? Have you got a light, boy? Right, you ready? So what we're going to do is make a little mark, a little mark, about that far in. Just a little border. Uh, let me come in a bit tighter so you can see what I'm actually up to here. Is it cold where you are at the moment? It was brass monkeys here this morning. About minus four. That's quite cold for um, for this little part of the world. See? So what we're going to do is make a... I'm going to use the... Yeah, that'll do. I'm going to use the ruler and make a little mark there and there, right? To be honest, I eyeballed it earlier, but I know that many of you like to know exactly where it is. Do that like that, right? So just make a little line. Mate, that's wrong, Gray. Coming down a bit further, right? I'm better off eyeballing it, me. Okay. So the idea is that you're going to make a, if you give yourself a little guide like that, it'll be a lot easier to put the masking tape down so that, so that the four lines are equidistant. There you go. So you go like that. Sorted. Turn it round. So again, low tap masking tape. See? Now you see the little pencil marks. I mean, you've got choices really here. Let's have a look. You could use the side, you could use this little gully if that's in the center, you know. So you're just going to make a little faux edge. There you go. So again, you can either give yourself a, and then when you press it in, you can see whether it's straight or not, can't you? Before you continue. I mean, it's low tap masking tape, so it's very easy to, Reposition, isn't it? Yes, mum. Right, that'll do. Hey, Grace, are you in the room as well? Grace in Brooklyn. Are you here, darling? Hmm? Can't wait to get over to New York next week. New York, New York. Haven't been for a while. Right, so now we've got our we've got our centre, haven't we? Got it? So now I've got that. I've got my little edge. That's created that. That's that. Now we need to make sure that the stamps are in the right place. Me personally, I would put a piece of tracing paper over the top of my artwork, of my border, so I can see exactly where the tra See? I can see exactly where the low tap masking tape is. I put a bit of tracing paper over the top, yeah? Cut it in half. And then, in fact, let's cut this in half. So you cut it in half and then you use it as your template. So you know that when you, let me just cut this in half. There you go. So now you can take your, this is a good way always for composition, see? Because that way, Glynis had snow, did you? Where are you then, Glynis? I know you're up north. Whereabouts? How far up north is that? Is that like Scarborough? That area? I can't remember exactly where you live. It's quite up north, isn't it? Um, Grace is around, is she? Hey, uh, yeah, good. Nice to have your company, Gracie. Okay, so, so we've got that. We've got our stamp. We're going to stamp that one there, and then we're going to take that one and stamp it there. And the trick is to make sure that they sit inside, inside the, the frame, okay? So tracing paper is good for that. Right, should we do it? And also, you prime the stamp, you check how much ink you need, make sure it works. Yeah? Let's have a look. So I've mounted this particular stamp on uh, a 4 by 4 mega mount. There you go. Let's have a look what we've got, shall we? I feel I want to put this to one side. <laughs> there you go. I just felt I needed to do that. Nottingham. Wow. 
Right, so we'll pop this in this corner here. Yeah, that's the top. That's like that. So we'll press on there. Right, now that, do you know, it could be parchment, couldn't it? You could be stamping this on parchment. I do like stamping on parchment, I have to say. Okay, very pretty. Très joli. And see that now. So even if you weren't where you should have been, now you can butt that down to there, let's say, because now you've got a dry stamp and you can see if that's there and that's going to be close-ish, isn't it? See, if that's there and that's there, you want to kind of, let's have a look, you want to put that like there, don't you? See? And that'll look really nice. Yeah? Like that. Don't worry about the, the busy bit. That's easy. So let's make a mental note when you're doing this. I mean, if you've got a, what are they called? Stamping platform. This is a piece of cake, isn't it? Right, I've got a rough idea where I'm putting it. And I need to leave enough room to put piece at the top, don't I? That's all I've got to know is I need to put piece up there. So if I do this and I pop that there and I've left a bit of gap there, bring that down a little bit because I don't think there's enough room for piece. That'll do. Right. I reckon that'll look good. So I'd be interested to see how close I am to my original. See, because at the moment... This isn't even the artwork finished yet, is it? Right, now let's have a look. Let's see if I can get piece on. Piece at Christmas. Right, so now we're going to use piece up here. I love this writing. We're going to pop piece there. That fits nicely, love. Right, then I'm going to put Christmas there. So I said it was easy. <laughs> right, Christmas here. So you're killing two birds with one stone here, really, because you're getting your composition, you're making sure, you're getting your template, so you know that this is going to fit. I'd rather make the, if I'm going to get it wrong, I'd see, I'd rather get it wrong on my tracing paper than get it wrong on the other side. So you know you've got to put a bit more ink on that one, Gray. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still good enough for. Right, and then this one goes in the centre, also at a jaunty angle, like that. There you go. So apart from the faded Christmas, 100%. Also, I have to say, if I had another run at it, which I'm going to have, I would put Christmas down a little notch, just a tad. Just saying. What else we got here? Peace at Christmas. I think there was even a, a happy in here in the actual set. Is there a... What we got? Oh, yeah. There you go. Merry. Merry Christmas. So if you wanted to, you could put Merry up there and Christmas there, couldn't you? Or Peace at Merry. <laughs> there, let's see how close I was. Not bad. Bang on. I brought the piece over a little bit on this one. Good. So now you've got your... your now you've got your template, you know where it's going, you know where it needs to sit for it to work. This is how you should do your card composition. Once you've got it once, you've got it for good. Okay, next thing. Transfer to card. You ready? I'm going to go quiet now, people. Right, friends. It's only, right, and before we get all, oh, no, it's stressful. No, it's not. It's defined stressful. It's a bit of card, all right? It's a bit of card, and we're supposed to be having some fun. And this, my friends, is your template. Unless you get it perfect, in which case you can send it to someone, all right? Let's have a look. Okay. Exactly the same as what we just did. We've already done, we've done a dress rehearsal. Come on. What have we got here? Nine, two. This ink pad may be a bit dry, friends. I wonder. Do you know what? Before I stamp that on there... Let me just make sure that the ink pad works on card because it's all very well and good. So I've got so many ink pads floating around here. Let's check. Oh, no, that's okay. I'm cool with that. There's another card in the making. Right, go again. 
So you, and it doesn't take this long when you're actually making a card, does it? It's just because I'm faffing about. Right, let's have a look. That goes there, that goes there, that goes there, and press. Right. I went to the dentist this afternoon. Cost a packet. I don't know. It's mad, isn't it? But there you go. It's either that or a gap. <laughs> I didn't want a gap. I don't want to be Gappy Lil. I remember when I was a kid, my dad always used to call me Gappy Lil. You know, when you start losing your teeth. Ah, oh, dear. At which point my mother kicked in. I told you this anyway. I always thought she said, oh, don't forget the tooth fairy is coming this evening. And I seriously always thought it was the tooth fairy. And I think I only figured out that it was the tooth fairy in my late 50s. <laughs> God, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. That's real. Now, let's have a look. Make sure you've got enough room. Don't hover around too much so that the ink dries on the stamp. Okay. Good enough. Right. What have we got now? Peace at Christmas. That one is a little bit more faded than I would like, but it's okay. For the purposes of this demonstration, it's absolutely fine. Right. Peace. Let's make sure. That's the magic of stamps, isn't it? At least you know it's spelt right. Wonderful. Peace. Christmas. Right, this is the one that was a bit too faded last time. There you go. Peace. Christmas. Go, 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 go. <laughs> oh, it's still a bit faded. Monkey. That's all right, though. And then we've got an at. Okay, at inside. At, that'll do. At. Okay, peace at Christmas. Right, we've got that. We've done that. You cool with that? Got it? Shall I let you catch up? Right, where's the lid? Where's the lid? Paul, are you still there? I'm feeling very lonely. <laughs> let me take that away. We've got to let this dry a little bit now, haven't we? We need to let this dry. So let's clear the stamps away because I don't think we need them anymore. Let's have a look. While this is drying, let's take a look at the next thing, shall we? Have you got that? Well done. Right, so next stage, clear decks, ready for next stage. Right, that's the stamps done. I don't think we need any more of them. And what have we learned so far? Well, We've learned how to. We've learned about layout, haven't we? Layout and composition. This would be nice. Did did we didn't use the masks for this, but in a minute we will. Right. Enter the masks. So what we want to do now is enter the masks. I'm thinking that it might not be quite dry enough, but we'll give it a go. We need some colour. So I use tattered rose. What did you decide to come up with? Did you have a different one? Let me pan out a little bit so that you can see. Okay, wunderbar. Right, so we've got tattered, got tattered rose, distress ink. I, I like, I quite like this pink, this sort of, you know, coppery pinky color. So that's the color. I've used a brush around the outside to get that nice halo effect. So that's why we still need to leave this around, don't we? So that might be a way to go, is to put a little bit of that down first get the brush warmed up before we do the middle bit. Now, when we get to do the middle bit, right, what we've got to do there is um, use our mask, right? So let's have a bit of a clear up, make sure we've got everything in place. Stay there a moment. And then I'll just, I've got this mask, that will do. But I did have the other one. Where have I stuck that now? Oh, Barbara. I'm usually better prepared than this, friends. That's all right. I'll find it. It's here somewhere. Um, oh, is it where I... <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Da -da. Yes, you can use distress oxides, friends. You can use distress oxides. The thing about distress oxides is that they're just, they're more, they're not as watery, that's the thing, or they're not dye-based, they're more chalky, but they're really nice to use with brushes. They're really nice to use with brushes. So absolutely. And yeah, the mask is on the left on the shelf, just where we said it would be. <laughs> right, ready? So, so what we're going to do is dust a bit of the pink around the outside. I'm deliberately avoiding the ink just for a couple of minutes just to let it dry. Okay, let's, I just feel I need to move that for a minute. Okay, so we need a little bit of ink on there. And then I think what I'll do is I'll put a bit of paper behind this again, you know, like we did before, just to make sure. Let me put a colored piece of paper behind so that you can see the actual artwork. Right, there you go. So let's see, if we dust. Oh, look, Gray. See, don't do what I did. Unless you're going to cut that off. You definitely want to cover that up, don't you? Oh, hats off, Barbara, for remembering. Even if you do get a little bit of an echo there. Right, so we're going to, you're either going to trim off the edge, aren't you, of the card, right? Or, you're just going to cover up. And, you know, is this wasteful? No. It's a bit of masking tape, right? Masking tape, masterpiece, which is which is more important, friends. Um, there you go. That'll do. Right, a little bit of surgery. Cover it all up. That's it. Right, and off we go. And round we go. Right. So the lovely thing about the brushes is that, I, bet, I hope you got these in the sale. Right, they should be, they, 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 they're nearly here, aren't they, Paul? <laughs> I know we put them on pre-order. It's a struggle, it is a struggle at the moment, trying to, trying to get things in stock, you know. But almost here, Paul says, I know, it's only taken six months. <laughs> round and round the garden six months what is happening right okay so that'll do for the outside we can always add a bit more but you do need to do that before you take the brush away now if you want it to be a bit darker let me give you a couple of tips if you're new they um paul says they're due to be unloaded from the ship next week yeah did they say where they were going to unload them <laughs> look watch if you want it to be a little bit darker what you're going to do is just splay the brush a little bit like that come down come down the brush a bit same as you would if it were a pencil and then just dust a bit more in that just dust 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 you know i'm always going on about um spot on sponges they really intensify the color so this i'm a bit i'm a bit dubious about the black on there i keep thinking it I should have left it 10 minutes, but hey ho, it is what it is. Voila. Right, okay, that'll do. I know that when we take this off, it'll look wonderful. Next thing, mask. So what we want to do now, let's have, go back to the original one. When we look at the mask, what we're doing is we're colouring in this area here. And it's the same colour, but it's much darker and it much more intense. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, let's, use, let's do this one. So we're going to use the mask, but we're going to use the outie, not this bit, because that would be if we wanted to cover this up and do that bit. Instead, we're going for this bit. Okay. Hold on. Let me stand up for this, it's a lot easier. So you hold it like that and then you slide it down. Sometimes when they're new, they're, they're quite sticky, right? That works like a charm. If when they're new, they're quite sticky. Well, you want them to be tacky, don't you? If that's the case, you just put them on your jeans like that, dish, dosh, dish, detack it a little bit and then, or your apron or your 
whatever it is you're wearing, your pyjamas, right? And then you go like that, like that, until you're happy. And when you're happy with the position, then you oh, load it down, put it down. I've used it a couple of times, obviously. And also, I've got wet ink, so it's, yeah, fine. Now, I need a bit more masking tape. I know. I don't remember using all this masking tape the last time I did this. That's weird. <laughs> Look, I need to cover up these little holes. Well, that'll be a... That won't work. Masking tape's a really good price, isn't it, Paul? <laughs> There you go. I mean, you can use it again and again. We'll say that. Right, so you've made a little, covered everything up, okay? That'll do. And we need this. Now, next thing, what we do need is uh, makeup. Spot on sponges. You've got a spot on sponge? Do you have a spot on sponge handy? Right now, have a look at this. Because what you're going to see... It's always a good idea to take a piece of the same card as you're working with so you see the intensity of the colour. See, it's a nice colour, this tattered row. So, see, you can build it up, you can sweep. They're great, these spot-on sponges, because they're... they're um... Paul, just so you know, is there any chance you could bring some when we go up to television on, um, on Sunday? Because I, believe it or not, I've run out again. I don't know. I, I don't. I can't believe I've run out, but I can't find any. Not in this chaos that is my art room. So, Paul, do us a favour and bring a couple of packs up to the TV with us. Thank you. All. Right. So now what we're going to do is we, you drop the colour down on the actual mask, right, and then you sweep it in like that. So this way you can pound. If you think the ink's still dry, uh, drying, then you can just pound it into place. What colours have we got going on? We've run out of sponges. No, we haven't. I have. <laughs> Are you telling me that we, Clarity, have run out of sponges too, or that I have run out of sponges and you can't believe it? <laughs> Please tell me it's just me. Oh, he says, I mean you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't understand that either, really, Paul. So there you go, you see. So what will happen is the masks, they act as a kind of a springboard for the colour. Now you can sweep that in and you can see how dark it gets. And you can also see how the black, unless it's dry completely, it will move. So there you go. You can use the brush if you feel, because you've protected everything. Everything's covered. To the best of my knowledge, everything's covered. But I'm staying around the outside because I want to get that kind of, that spherical effect, you know? Are you sure you want to end this stream? Now, why would I want to do that? No, I don't. Are we still on? My computer was playing up just before we went live. And um, and it's still playing up. So I had a right old rush of blood to the head just before we went live. Still live. Thank you very much. Okay, so now we've done that. That works quite well, doesn't it? I'm happy with that. Now we'll lift this off. I think we can probably use all this so we won't waste it. All right, take all this off. Take that off there. Take that off there. So now I need to move my mask to the other bauble. Can I say get well soon to Dean Wilson? You certainly can. I speak to him often. And I will make sure that he knows that, our, that we are all thinking about him. He's doing all right. He's doing all right. All things considered, he's okay. Our mate's all right. Now, let's go up here. Yeah, what a... Chaos. Right now, so what I'm doing here is I'm lining up the top and the bottom. There you go. And now we need to cover up this bit, don't we? So this is all protected. Let's have a look. And now we'll use our masking tape to cover up all the bits again so that we don't spoil our artwork. Agreed? Look. See? 
you can use the same bits again. There you go. And then I've got that little bit there to cover up. Do you know, I've got to get rid of these. Excuse me a second. I've got all these boxes for TV prep at my feet. Oh, that's better. Now I can curl up. Right. This little bit here needs protecting too, doesn't it? So that's okay. That'll do. See? You just need to cover up the areas you don't want to spoil. That'll do. Okay. And back to the spot on sponge. Okay. I think there's a little bit of it's all right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wander that far. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of colour in there, see? Around the side here. All held to the mask, eh? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite a shock. Poor old Dean. Um, but it's not my story to tell, you know. So I wasn't able to say anything. I was only there to support, love and support him and his family. And so, you know, Dave and I were there. And But, um, but it has to come from Dean, not from me. You know, I'm, I don't want to gossip about what's happened to Dean. He needs to... There's, it's all over Facebook now, um, you know, and and if you inter you know, he had a big big car accident. He wasn't in the car. He was he um, he was walking across a road, and he got taken out. But he's all right, you know. And you know what's amazing about him, and this is this is it. This is why we're such good friends. He is so positive and upbeat and just uplifting. He really is, you know. And he, um, even when we, when we went to see him in hospital, you know, he wasn't in a good, he wasn't in good shape, but he, uh, he kept smiling. He was so grateful to be alive. He was so appreciative of all the nurses. And he, you know, those 32 teeth of his, he was using all of them. And, and he had this great big neck brace on. And he just kept smiling. He had terrible gravel rash right across his face, but he's still handsome. And he was just grateful and happy. And, and at no point did he, did he blame anyone or was he negative or accusatory or anything. He was just happy to be with us, you know. And I think that power of positive thinking is what got him out of hospital so quickly. He's at home. He's recovering. You know, but the power of positivity is quite, quite astounding, quite powerful. Yeah. So love and healing energy, love and healing energy uh, to, to Dean. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure he won't be in the room with us listening to this, but he'll be glad to know that you are thinking of him. I know that. I know that for sure. And I'm sure in a quiet moment, I know he had a dark, he had dark days, you know. Of course he did. Good lord. But you got to fake it to make it, and he knows that better than anybody today. Right. So now we're going to remove all our the, all our little bits of masking tape. I think this is what I've got to do. Let me have a think. <laughs> right. So I've done that one. I've done that one. Let's see what this looks like then. When we take this off. Right, slowly, because we don't want to tear it, do we? No, we don't, Grey. <laughs> we really don't. Oh, they look good. Happy with that. Right, so now I'm going to replace my mask on the, on the sheet. Turn it upside down and then relocate. That will do. There you go. It's as good as it gets. Right, now, let me have a think. We've done that. We've done that. Are we ready to remove? Yeah, let's start at the top. And start peeling away the layers. And slowly does it. So usually the low tap masking tape, it it's good and it doesn't take the card with it. But I always think, apart from the fact there's always a first time, I also think that it, it's you you're peeling away from the edge, you're going layer by layer. Look at me cheeky little pink edge there. 
<laughs> all that masking tape. <laughs> See, you just peel it gently away. There you go. Mm -hmm. Nice. Just peel it gently. There you are. Cool. Very, very cool, Barbara. Even if I say so myself. Right now, where are we? Does yours look like mine yet? <laughs> hey? So you can see here, I've put a little bit of an edge on that one. If you want to. Do you want to give that a go? Oh, all right then. What do we need for that? Yeah, of course we do. So I think we can use, um, let's use this. Should we do that at the end? Let's not do that yet. Let's look at what do I want to do next? Oh, uh, what about a little bit of colour? Right, okay. Did I say so? Let's have a look. Have we used it? Twiggy, bauble, tick, embedders, tick, six by six, black archive, the distressing, tracing paper, stamp, used, used, micron pen, HB pencil and ruler, used it, 12 polychromos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look what I've just found at the bottom of my box. <laughs> There you go. Who says? Listen, you don't get to 64 without forgetting a few things, friends. Nice colours, though. Is that that one? Yeah, there it is. Look, pink and orange. I, I actually, I'm leaning on the pink here. Don't you think that looks good? Not gentle. But what we need, what we need now, because I wanted to try these, and I don't know if you can... Let's have a look. If I put this on here, let's see if you can see the metallic pencil. Oh, yes, you can. You see the metallic pencil? Yeah, good. All right, that's what we're going to use. Because in this set, these polychromo set of 12, there's these metallics. There's gold, silver, and copper, right? And we don't use them. But we should. We want, I thought, well, let's have a look at how metallic, how metallic is this Faber-Castell top quality best pencil in the world? Well, I thought, actually, it's really, really metallic. See that? So let me show you something. If you go in lightly, it doesn't really go. It's just, it, it does shine a bit. But when you really get it, if you've got these, is when you press hard. And as soon as you press hard, it goes like real metallic. Ah, oh, let me see if I can show you this. Let me try on the other glove. Let it, let it focus. There. See? Real metallic. That's the copper. Very good. God, look at the state of my nails. I really, I'm having a date to remember. Okay. Let's have a look. So the gold, the silver, I'm going to go with the copper because I think it works really nicely with the um, with the pink. Yeah. Are we still all together? 184 people. You're warming my cockles. You really are. 184. Ain't that great? Right. So what we want to do. What else are you going to do on a Thursday night? Nothing else on, is there? <laughs> And hang out with a load of friends in the warm. Hmm? Just checking the pencil. <laughs> Worth noting this, right? And we've said it a few times. If you press really hard, then what you do is you seal the pigment on here, don't you? And so it's a really good idea to have a bit of sandpaper or something like this. These are good. These are... Um, but see, they're loads of sandpaper. This is what they're for, really. This is for when you have really expensive pencils, like Faber-Castell pencils, and you don't want to keep sharpening them, right? But if you press, 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 press like that, then what happens is you seal it, and you go to use it, look, and it doesn't really do it anymore. It doesn't do it because you've sealed the pigment. All you've got to do is just rough it up on the, on the pencil, literally rough up the pencil a bit, and then you'll find... It's much better. It's stronger. Straight away, you can feel it's got more purchase. Okay. So I've got a bit more purchase now. And then what we're going to do is focus on the, focus on the, um, 
there we go, on the swirls, okay? Just for, just for the hell of it, just stick to the swirls. So you just go around and give yourself a drop shadow, like that, using the metallic pencil, okay? There you go. And then just add a little bit of a, just on the swirls. Don't overthink it. I mean, if you, do you make your own Christmas cards? Most of us do, don't we? Yeah. Most of you, I know you, most of you started months ago, didn't you? I, well, I blimmin' hope you did, because you certainly bought a lot of Christmas stamps and Christmas groovy plates. So unless you just like shining them and polishing them and looking at them in the cupboard, I'm hoping against hope that you're actually using what you, what you buy. Eh? Come on, tell me. You've, who's made all their Christmas cards? Who's made all their Christmas cards already? I got the first one delivered today. Pat Hoskins. You get the prize for being the first Christmas card through the door this year. And it is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So gorgeous. I've got to bring it here. I'm going to show it on telly on Sunday, Pat. So you better be watching. Um, it's, on, it's in the kitchen by the Arga. Stunning. And, uh, and I thought, that is so good. And irony of ironies, the little stamps that you use, they're on the telly on Sunday. So I thought, perfect sample, perfect sample. We have an honorary design team guest on Sunday. Her name is Pat Hoskins, and she is a modest 80, is it six or seven now, Pat? You were only, only your birthday last week, wasn't it? I know. Hats off to you. Your card is fantastic. There you go. So you see what we're doing here? 87. Paul's just told me 87 well i'll tell you what pat i hope with all my heart that i'm as dynamic and switched on and brilliant as you are well first of all actually i hope i get to your age <laughs> you know what i mean that's the first thing i should be eternally grateful if i get that far but i'd love to get that far and have your verve and your your zest for life that i really would you know and i know i know you get you get tired and you know you get worn out but blimey i know some 20 year olds that get tired and worn out so i wouldn't i wouldn't put too fine a point on it <laughs> hey i think you're brilliant anyway i do Right, so here we go, see, and I'm bringing, I'm just shading. I'm not pressing hard. I think that's the trick with these um, metallics, right? Just get the shade in first, like that. And if, you, if you're losing the, the purchase, just remember to rough up on the sandpaper. See, as soon as I do that, off it goes again. Nice. You'll be pleased to know, well, or not, or maybe you don't give a monkeys, but yesterday... <laughs> I did start glazing. Remember I said in the shack on Monday, the problem with pottery, you know, when you've got a huge kiln is you either, either everybody's getting pottery for Christmas <laughs> by the time you load the kiln or nobody's getting pottery for Christmas. So then I thought, oh, sod it. I know I'm going to bite the bullet. And even if it's only a half load, I'm going to go for it. Okay. So... So yesterday evening, and it was freezing in the garage. It was so cold. I was glazing away like a good one. And then the thing is, that's what happens, you see. When you do something you really love, you start and you think, you know, you get over it, get out there, get your jumper on. And then, um, and then about four hours later, Dave says, you're still out here? I'm going to bed. I say, oh, no, don't, don't leave me out here. <laughs> Just... Give me another 10 minutes. <laughs> I just need to check this, this glaze. I need to just. So actually, because it's on, I'm above the garage. When we finish doing our, our lovely craft along, I'm going to go down and just check on and do another. I said, I've got 40 pieces to fill. So that's 10. I've got to do, I've got to do another 20 tonight. 
and then 10 again tomorrow, and then kiln. Uh, but even if I don't do all of them, all the pots and bowls that I've made, I don't matter. That'll be all right. I'll do the best I can, eh? No stress. I just wanted to get a couple ready for, for to take to America on, but to be honest, they're probably thinking, oh, no, not more pots. <laughs> oh, no. oh, mum, no, not more tiles. Uh, whatever. I think handmade gifts are wonderful. Don't you? Hmm? I do. Handmade cards. I, n I never throw cards away, you know, because what's, what's so wonderful, apart from the artwork, is that somebody actually invested their time in making something for you, and therein lies the gift, the gift of giving, eh? Ain't that the truth? Yeah, ain't that the truth? Yeah, I think so. There, this looks nice, doesn't it? So we've got ourselves a little bit of a, and then when we've done that, what we could do now, if you wanted to, and I, I did on this one, but I think, I think I need to get a bit more of a point going on this now. So I can do that with a, let's see. So you could just soften up those twigs by, you know the way we, in the shack, you just add a little bit of twiggery, little few, few needles on the pine. Look, you don't have to go loads, but it does soften it up a little bit. I quite like that look. So you can do that as well, can't you? Hmm? What's the time? Eight oh, seven o'clock. Oh, good, because we started. Yeah, that's a bit of luck. We started early. Did you have a takeaway today then? Or did you just eat early? Hmm? Yeah. So that's quite a nice thing to do, just to soften up the edge. Now I've done that. I think the next thing to do Okay, look, done that, done that, done that, done that. Got our, uh, you've got your, your lovely, so you can always go in now if you want to, get close to the edge and just go in and add a bit more luster by pressing a bit harder. So you see, you've got your drop shadow, now you can really press hard. I like, I like. There you go. Mm, this is going to be nice. Right. So you can see the, can you see the, the metallic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, when I hold it, it's really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. Crisps and chocolates. Is that what you had for tea, Paul Church? No wonder you're so slim. If that's all you ever eat, crisps, chocolates and coffee. Okay, so we've done that, we've done that. Now, next thing is the glitter. This is the finishing touch. This is the best bit, okay? So, should we do the glitter? Now, you've got choices here. Obviously, we've got mapping pens, don't we? We use mapping pens for our glitter. We do indeed. But I think sometimes, especially when you're in mass production, and it doesn't have to be super, super fine, because see this, we don't want it really super fine. Look, let me come in close and you can see there, when I hold it like that, see what I've done? I've just traveled around the swirls and down the, do you see? Doesn't need to be super fine today because we're getting a little bit of bling going. Right, what color do you reckon? A hint of copper, maybe. Or what about pink? I'm, I'm leaning towards, because you got, Green, gold, silver, blue, copper, and pink. I'm leaning towards pink, to be fair, just because I think that'll work. Copper probably works too because it's copper, copper, but I'm going with that. Now, 
So instead of using sticky ink and a mapping pen, how about we use a quickie glue pen? Okay, just for ease. Just for ease. Yeah. It works on parchment as well, just so you know. And you can get a fine line with it, but you can't get as fine a line with this as you do with the mapping pen. But this is a good, easy solution. It really is. So let me think, do I want to do that first or do I want to do that first? My thoughts on this are we do the outline first because if there's all grit and glitter, it's going to be easier to run this pen round there now. You don't have to, but I reckon I'd rather do it now than when there's glitter on the card. Do you agree? Right, here we go. And if your black bits have gone a bit faded because of the ink, especially if you've used Distress Oxide, that will certainly be the case. Then you might want to tune into this. But what we're going to do is travel with the pen, right? Travel with the pen, lightly does it. We're going to sweep through there and you're going to stop where it's busy. So that if you if you need to stop, stop where, where there's a, a lot of chatter, right? So we're going to go like that. Round we go. And then I'll stop there because really, look, <laughs> <laughs> really? Then we're going to go this way and we're going to stop there. Right, here we go again. Round we go. Keep your eye on the road ahead, said the old biker chick. There you go. And then we'll turn it round and then we'll go back the other way. Now this time, all oh, right, it's a long haul. Round we go. Keep going, Greg. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Stop. Good enough. And then to the top. And off we go again. Voila. Right, and then you can jazz up the black a bit. Always do all this before you apply the glitter. Because, like I say, once you've got the glitter on there, you don't really want to go with a micron pen. How are we doing? I have enough Christmas cards, but I'm still making. Well, lucky you. Have you considered selling them? <laughs> Because I bet you got some takers. <laughs> right, so I've done that. I've done that. Glitter next, friends. Here we go. So make sure that you're sticky. You secure it. Is it a secure? What is it? Uh, yeah, secure. Quickie glue pen. Right now, the thing with a glue with a glue pen is if you if you go fast it goes thinner. If you go slow, it goes fatter, see? So if you want it to be bold, the longer you look, take going down the path, the fatter the line, right? You want it thin, just go fast. You won't miss anything, but it works. Okay, so that's that's it. That's to some extent of my knowledge about the quickie glue pen. <laughs> right, ready? And the other thing about it is, it's like, if you like, it's just like um, the sticky ink that we use with our mapping pen. Right, here we go. It's All I'm doing is going around the twirls, just following what I just did with the pencil. Um, it stays wet until you add the anything so it stay wet forever until you it stays sticky is what i mean so there's no rush now to have to add see when you lift it up you can see where you've gone you always go back but again you're back to that you're going to have the glitter everywhere aren't you now let's just check on it that we've got a I've really enjoyed these designs. Right, that'll do. Let's make sure it's going. Uh, that'll do. Yeah, that's nice. Um, I've really enjoyed these designs, you know. I think also because I know that it's to do with children in need so it's a very noble cause you know 
I think that's that's a positive, isn't it? I feel like I need to put a bit more glue on that bit there. Hmm? Should we put a bit of glue on our little black bits as well? What about the words? Should we do a little bit? Dip, 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 dob, dob, dob. The thing about the glitter is, the Perga glitter, if you need glitter, then look no further because this glitter is absolutely fantastic. And um, it's, it's made for us by wow. You know, Marion M say, what a smashing woman she is. I love Marion. I really do. I remember years ago, I know I met her. We were at the CHA in Anaheim. Um, I'm going to put a bit of glitter on the words, yeah. Oh, that came out a bit there. Um, and we were at the great big craft, you know, the American craft show in, in, in L.A., and it was a lovely sunny day and we were just walking through the main building, Dave and I, and outside on the, on the steps, I could see this woman and she had the box. She was a tiny little blonde and she had this huge box and there was no way she could get up the stairs on her own because the box was in front of her and she was like this, trying to get this box up the stairs. And I thought, well, there's going to be, there's an accident waiting to happen. So I rushed to help her. I said, do you need a hand with that? And it was Marion M say. And at that point, she knew me, but I didn't know her, right? And I said, come on, give me the box. I'm twice your height. And um, yeah, let's get up the stairs together. Anyway, we just became friends. And just just like that, just and she could have been anybody. She could, I didn't, I certainly didn't expect an English voice to come back. Isn't that nice? So there you go. That's how we made friends. Me trying to help a lady who was struggling with a big box. <laughs> Funny old world, isn't it? Now, let's have a look. I think I've got enough sticky ink on there. Should we see if it worked? <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, and so we became friends. And that's how now, how now, we, we go to WOW for our powders and for our embossing um Everything, actually, that we possibly could get from them, we do. Because they're good people, you know. And quite aside from anything else, their, um, their, their products are excellent. You know, like proper second to none. So there you go. So I like these glitters because, here's the sales pitch, you ready? First of all, look, anti-static, not. So that means they're anti-static, which means that you don't leave half the stuff on the, on the uh, there's a little tiny bit, but honestly, because they're anti-static, it's not bad at all. Next thing I like about them, selling point number two, it's got a big opening, so it's easy to funnel back in, right? Next thing I like about them is that they're really uh, translucent, so they don't, um, yeah, they're not big and bold and, and kind of kindergarten-y glitters. They're really sophisticated glitter. And you can see they last an age. Next selling point that I really like is this great little container. Look, isn't that snazzy? Okay. There you go. Made exclusively for us by Marion. That's what I read when I see that. Hey, girl power. Right. Now let's have a look. Which one are we on? That's the one that we did earlier. Do you know what? That's encouraging when you don't know which one you've just finished. So either that or should have gone to spec savers. Now let's have a look. If I just tap this to get rid of the excess. Yeah, that'll do. There you go. Hang on. Way! say noel right isn't that nice so there's your glitter went a bit mad on the words but actually i don't mind that i want to see what it looked like let's see what we prefer see let me hold it like that let's have a look. see you've got a bit more glitter on the words than on that one i think i'll go i'll i prefer black 
But there you go. If you don't try it, you don't know, do you? So that's that one. Then what we've got to do is take our, our background paper, decide which one we prefer. Now, this is the one we're working on. So go like that. Do we go the pink? Do we go l'orange? Both look lovely. I'm still, I do like that pink, I've got to say. Might not be a traditionally Christmas colour, but who says? Who says that Santa is red and green and, you know, does it have to be? Does it? Nine. Right. So then we've got an eight by eight. You can trim that back, your designer. If you want to, you can gut it, if you know what I mean. Just take the middle out with the nested so you don't waste all that paper. That looks very nice. I think it's very sophisticated. Or you could bring it in a bit, trim it back more, right? Instead of an eight by eight, you could use a seven by seven. Looks good too, doesn't it? Well, these are my thoughts. So, so many different finishing tricks. But thus endeth project number one. Right, you ready for project number two then? Pink is nice. Pink is very nice. Should we try project number two? Yeah? I'll show you a tealy one that I did. This was nice. This was, you know, when I tested to make sure that the um, stamp worked before, well, this one was that one, right? Look, with the mask, teal on the inside. Get it? Looks nice. And then I was testing out the, let me see if I can show you on this page. I was testing out the next thing we're going to use on the groovy plates on the inside of this. Let, let it just settle. See the little dots? Rather than glitter, I was using those gel pens. See the dots there? Well, they're very, very glittery, actually. There, you see them? It's really cool. Right, so that's what we're going to use on our on our groovy project, right, but Paul Church really nailed this one. So I think, right, that's that, that's that. I don't think we need any of that anymore. So if you're ready, do you want to go and have a quick potty break? And then we'll clear the decks and then we'll do the, the groovy one. This is going to be really cool. Look, 179 people. <gasps> that's cool. You watch. You better hang around now. This is the best bit. You wait till you see what Paul Church has come up with. It's so clever. Also, he even did the project because I'm a little bit up against it at the moment. <laughs> right. Um, Paul did the project for us. And I thought, what a guy. Not only did he do the project for us, but he also, <laughs> he wrote out all the steps for me too. He completely took the thinking out of it for me. Isn't that lovely? So let's have a look. This is a real simple one. Okay, here we go. What do we need? I'm, 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 I'm going to check myself too. Let me just put all this out of the way. Stamps are done now. Right, we like that. Don't forget to put the link up, Paul. If anybody wants to get on the charitable drive with us, there's still plenty of time, right up until Big Ben Bombs. There you go. Say that when you've had a sherbet. So what we've got is we need, we need first of all, we need our grid plate, mate. Have you got that one? This is so, so cool. Grid plate, mate, right, and the plate that goes inside it uh voila so you have got yourself so many um different borders and plates and frames it's crazy and that's what we're going to use that one so we've got that and that then we need um the twiggy bauble and the spacer have we got that as well i hope so <laughs> where have i put where have i put that Hang on, I've got it in here. Bear with, bear with. There it is. And a spacer. <clears throat> right? So when we get to use this bit, this falls out. This one we don't need then. And then we're going to use that one. And we need this little fella just so that this doesn't rattle around. These are what we call spacers. Okay? So we pop the spacer in there. So we need that and that. 
Then we need, what else we got on here? Pico dies. Okay, we could talk about that in a minute. Tools one and two, black mat, groovy tabs and guard. Yeah, all right. Uh, pens, yes. Pens as in uh, pens, right? These are the metallic gel pens. We're going to use those. Groovy tabs and guard, necessity. Tumble dry sheet, voila. Uh, tools, I have. And if it does, if we if we've got time, I'll even show you how to use our um, how to mount it all together. Right. So that's the gear. That's the gear. It doesn't require a lot. Oh, and parchment. You do need some A5 parchment. Okay. Very good. I'm an old parcher, but enjoy groovy too. Old. Old. What is this word? Old. I am a traditional parcher, but I enjoy groovy too. There you go. That sounds more like it. Yeah, well, I tell you what, we're all moving towards being traditional parchers. You know, there's so much, so much overlap now, isn't there? Right, let's have a look. So what we want to do, we'll take that out of the way, and then we're going to play Simon Says, except Simon is not Simon, he's Paul. Okay, we'll have a look. Shall we have a look at what he's put together for us? Let's check out. Let's check out where we're headed. It's always good to see where we're headed. Okay, so first of all, let's deconstruct this. We have a piece of card. My guess is that that is a uh, seven by seven, seven by seven white card blank. Good gear, okay. Then we he's obviously suffered, Simon. Paul suffered from which from choice here. So he cut out loads of different colors to decide. So we can decide at the end which one we're going to use. And that's where we're headed. So let's just take just for the sake of argument, let's just take one. All right, we can always look at the rest later. All right, let's take one, pop that on there. And you know, if you wanted to. Brighten this up a little bit. Let me show you. Let me come in a bit closer. And you'll see if you want to brighten it up a little bit. It's very clever. See the baubles are, he's done exactly the same as what we did in the stamp layout wise, right? But look, when you, you can always lighten it up a little bit by sliding um, uh, another piece of parchment in underneath. Okay. So a really nice, simple, but clever um, introduction to parchment art here, to, to the groovy art. And what we'll do is we're going to go to Paul's instructions, literally, and we're going to just read them. Okay. So, ready? You ready? Right, here we go. Now, what does it say? Step one, Pico cut parchment. Okay. Well, this is what we mean by pico cut parchment. So we've got these nested square pico cuts, right? So these are all the different ones. And we're going to take the fourth one in. One, two, three, four. And the magic thing about pico cuts, these dies, you see they give you that pico cut edge. So that means that when you actually do the artwork, it actually looks like, look, let me put it up. It looks like it's been cut with the scissors pico cut. And also, you can see you can do it on card as well. So it looks really nice. You can cut card and parchment. So this was just a real game changer because our theory is not cheating. What it means is that if you do, if you're starting out, then you don't have to cut all the way around the outside. Secondly, you don't have to waste hours cutting around a square or a circle or an oval. We've got all the different shapes rectangles, etc. We've got all the different nested Pico dies. And then that gives you more time to cut out the, the, the little windows within the artwork. You see? Anyway, that's our theory and it works for me. So, so we're going to take that one, that Pico die, and we're going to cut the parchment. Okay. <laughs> so let's cut the parchment 
and it's that size, right? Fourth one in. And if you haven't got a Pico die, then worry not. You can use a ruler and a craft blade and the size that you look, just to get a bit of, just look, just get a piece of A5 parchment and join in. And we can always do the cutting out with a blade and craft knife afterwards, can't we? So don't feel, oh, well, that's it. I'm out of the loop because I haven't got a, the, the Pico dies. Well, get a blade and a ruler. It works, okay? Now, let's have a look. So Pico cut there. We've done that. Wipe with tumble dryer sheet on both sides. Okay. Paul says wipe with tumble dryer sheet on both sides. We're good for that, are we? There is a front and a back to this. You can see when you when you cut it out. When you're using the tumble dryer sheet, always it's a good idea, right? Top tip, top tip. Stay away from the groovy plates because when you use a tumble dryer sheet on parchment, it it allows the the um, the tool to glide in the groove. But if you use a tumble dryer sheet on the acrylic plates, the groovy plates. Your tabs, your groovy tabs won't stick because you've just slicked up the plastic. There you go. So it, that's why I'm suggesting. And because this is Pico cut, it's got like little teeth all the way around the edge. So it's a good idea. If you come in, it will cut, it will catch. So you sweep out, outwards. That's why I'm doing this. And that's why I'm staying away from. So stating the obvious, but those two things are they can make the difference between it works and it doesn't work okay so there you go that was that was the start we've done that we'll put that to one side we don't want to use the wrong one right white with tumble dry sheet on both sides done it on the back of the parchment trace out the frame with the number one and number two tool i know exactly what he means this this is where we're headed OK, on the back of the parchment. So if you've Pico cut your piece out, then the back. So the back, you can see the front's got a kind of a little shelf. So we're going to pop this in place. I love it when it all sits together nicely. We're going to take our groovy plates. Right. Who's working with me on this? Have we got have we got? People doing this? Let's have a go. Right, put it in place so it's all nice and straight. And then, are we going to do this in real time or are we just going to fast forward? Right, number one tool. We need a groovy guard to hold it in place while we work. Okay, and then we'll start. So the first thing we want to do is get our, see, because we did the groovy, there you go. Once we've done that, that helps a lot. And then we're just going to start going round. So number two tool for the dots, and then round you go. Okay. So number one tool for the line, and then for the dots. Personally, I prefer the number two tool, and you just go round, give a little wiggle, and then off you go. So, and then we go around and we just keep going like this. There you go. A few are doing it at the same time, Paul says. Good. Well, in that case, we're going to do it in real time. And if it takes five minutes, it takes five minutes. If this were traditional parchment, it would take a lot longer. But what's lovely with this grid is you've got all these lovely... Um, so many different options, right? And and the other thing is the, the perfect frames. They're all there. The straight lines. Josie Davison. Amazing. All right. So we've got a really good grid going here. And um, and relax. And round we go. I'm not as fast as others, but you know what? I don't remember it being a race. So around we go like this. Um, actually, while I'm doing this, I can tell you something else. Because you see how Paul just gives us the instructions and then we go, right, step one, 
la la. Step two, la la. And so these instructions, I mean, that's really what clarity is all about, is about teaching you how to use the things that we make and sell to you, okay? That's why we're here doing this now. That's why we get together in the shack. That's why on the television, I'm always doing demos. That's why we've got a library. Um, we've got a library full of, of tutorials and, you know, and more to come always, you know. And we've also got our clubs. So our clarity clubs are formidable, really. And you, there's so much involved. I don't know if, if you are in the club, um, but it's, a, it's fantastic value, you know. We've got three different product clubs and you, you get a gift, you get a project. Say, say you're in the stamp club. Every month, you kind of collect the set. Let's make sure that this is sitting right. You kind of collect the set. So every month you receive uh, a, a project, double project sheets, information, learning, right? And then you also, actually, do you know what? I'm going to go all the way around, I think. Um, you, get, you get the project sheets and then you get the stamp to make the projects on the sheets. And, and every month, whether you, if you're in the stamp club you get that if you're in the stencil club you get a stencil really nice designs uh all all exclusive to the club they're not available any to anybody else except the people in the club right and then we've got the same for um we've got the same for stencils stamps and groovy obviously groovy is the biggest club definitely by a country mile and you get a little plate designed by Linda Williams every single month. And then you get double projects designed by Linda and Jane every single month. Right. But then the other things, the other advantages of being in the club, apart from receiving, you know, being part of a community and, and getting um, a monthly instalment, you also, you get... 10% discount on all purchases if you're in one or two clubs. You get 15% discount if you subscribe to all three clubs. So that's quite substantial. Okay. You, so, and that's always. Then twice a year, once in February and once usually in July, we do an exclusive, we have an exclusive sale. Like we just did the Grey Friday sale. But when, when it's for the club members, it's only for the club members. And then that is usually a half price sale. Um, and that's twice a year. That's a blanket sale, isn't it, Paul? Okay. So that's, that's exclusive. And we've been doing a lot of thinking about the club because we, we've, got it, we've got it now. We've nailed it. And you'll know that we've also, um, we've, brought the times forward so so where before we were struggling and the club was always going out mid-month third week you know which is rubbish really and we knew it was but we were so overwhelmed so so the last couple of months last three months or so we've made a real concerted push to bring the clubs closer to the beginning of the month which is where they should be we know that we've just been you know it's just been chaos really anyway we've got it now we're on top of it. And so now the clubs are going out in the first week of the month, which is perfect. Right. Sue, Jilly, Paul, Jazz, Jane, Dee, Linda. I mean, there's a lot of work goes into the clubs. Myself, you know, and that's not including the product. Then you've got all the makers. So then you've got Lisa on stencils. You've got Laurent on stamps. You've got Jen and Sam on groovy. So it's a big job, right, every month. and. What else do you get if you're in the club? Club exclusivity, birthday. If you tell us when your birthday is, we'll be sure to send you a card. If you didn't get a card, chances are we haven't got your details. Otherwise, we would be sending you a birthday card without fail. Okay. So there are lots of advantages. Just right. Now, the price, this is, so we had a meeting today about it. Right. It's six pounds a month. That's all it is. 
six pounds a month per pro per project, as in per club. So if you're in the stamp club, it's six. If you're in the in the stencils, it's six. If you're in the groovy, it's six. So you get all that for six pounds. Include. I mean, for me personally, I think the discount. If you're a shopper, just the discount's worth six quid. But you get all that too. So we had a meeting today and we said, this is what we're going to do, right? We decided that the club is going to get better. And first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a club, call it a club weekend, okay? So going forward from the 1st of January, we're going to have a club weekend. Like Paul said at the meeting, we're going clubbing. Yes, we are. We're going clubbing, okay? So we're going to have a club weekend. We're going to have special events just for club members. We're going to um, have a monthly prize draw. So every month somebody's going to receive a £50 gift voucher in their envelope. That's a nice little touch, you know. I wouldn't mind opening an envelope and getting 50 quid. I mean, I've been playing the lottery for as long as I can remember. And I think they must hear me. You know, I think the algorithms, they must think, oh, she's getting brassed off. I think she's going to pull her direct debit. So we better give her a, we better give her a little, throw her a bone, give her a little nibble. And then it says, you have won a lucky dip. And that's about the sum of my, my lottery success. <laughs> so, you know, the odds of your getting a 50 pound gift voucher are far, far greater than the chances of any of us winning the lottery or even a lucky dip, actually. So there you go. The club's getting better. We're going to have club weekends. We're going to, and this is all for six pounds. We're not changing the price. Now, here's the thing. What we've also decided to do, ready, is, oh, and then Paul's just said, oh, and they get a newsletter from me. Yeah, I write a newsletter every month. I just wrote this one this morning, which was why this all came into my head, because I thought, we really need to do something. Now we've got the date right and we've got the times right and we've got a really good system in place and good people at the helm. I think, you know what? Let's promote the club and let's grow the club and let's just get it going. So this is my this is my my proposal. If you're if you for next year, right? If you sign up to one or two or three of the clubs before the 31st of December, i.e. before Big Ben bongs, okay, that was Jilly said that and I got it all wrong. I had Big Bong Bens and all sorts. <laughs> yeah, if you sign up and you pay in full, so... Instead of, say, it's 12 months of six is 72, or if you're two clubs, then it's two times 72. Instead of paying for 12 months, you will only pay for 11 months. And that means that instead of 72 pounds for the Groovy Club, it now is 66 pounds. And you have to pay, though, in full before the turn of the year. So that means that gives us a really good idea of numbers going forward for production. That's why we're doing it. And, and also because we want to grow it because we think it's brilliant. And so we're going to invest in it. And if we invest in it, then we need to grow the numbers. So the only way this will work is if it's a partnership. And if you subscribe to the club and pay the fee in full before the 31st of December, then you're signed up. And if your, if your club um, subscription runs, say, through till February or March or even August, whatever, right, that doesn't matter. We will just tag your next 12 month subscription. We will respect the sell, the special offer. It's not just for people who renew in January. It's for whenever you renew, except you've got to do it before the 31st of December this year in order to take advantage of the special offer. There you go. Um, so the product has already gone live on with the special price has gone live on the website. So if you sign up, for example, tonight, Look, then that's it. You're in for a year and you get 12 months and all the other things that we are going to be offering. But you only pay 
for 11 months. There you go. And, I, and that pitch took me, that's pretty good, you know, Barbara. There you go. And I've done my frame as well. Thank you. And just in case I didn't get it right, there's one already done for me. So let's have a look. Step one, Pico cut parchment. See, this is this is reminds me of the club in a way, except it's live. Pico cut parchment, white with tumble dry sheet on both sides. On the back of the parchment, do that. Sorted. Right, we've done that. So I don't think we need this anymore. We'll get rid of that. Take one of these and then we'll move on. Yeah. Now let's have a look. I'll put that there just in case I need it. And then we go to step two. So let's have a look. Paul says, <laughs> see, I like this sort of thing. I so seldom follow instructions. I'm a rubbish recipe follower. I don't know about you, but I'm rubbish at following recipes. I need the plate, mate. Yeah. Okay. I need the plate, mate. I'm rubbish at following recipes. I tend to make my own recipes out. But with this stuff, it's so nice. It's like it's like the project club. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. And it's like it's a really good learning curve, you know, because the people that do the projects, Dee Paramore, Jane Telford, Linda Williams, I mean, these are top banana. These girls, they know their stuff, you know, and, uh, and they just pour all their knowledge into these projects. So that's pretty cool, you know. Now, let's have a look. We need the plate, mate. Right. Turn the parchment to the front. Okay. Using the number, use the number two tool. All right, we need the plate first. Right, get the plate, the twiggy, the twiggy plate. Right, there you go. And let me just check something. Yeah, okay. And then the spacer, like so. Right, that fits in there nicely. So it doesn't wobble around. I'm going to just tie that in like that that's it that's not going anywhere now okay that's in place so turn the parchment over to the front use the number two tool to lightly trace out the o oh the little drops the little drops yeah i get what you're saying yeah 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 okay so what we've got to do is use the number two tool right to lightly trace out just a little bit we have to do it on the front lightly because of course we're working on the front. This is all done on the front. That's done on the back. But that's all right. I've got it. I understand. So what we've got to do is put our... See, if that's going to be like that, then we need to put our groovy tool, our groovy tabs in place so it doesn't move while we're working. We'll pop this one in. So we've got to put these little white bits in before we do the rest of the job. So we'll do that there and that there like that. Happy with that? Right, and then we're gonna use the number two tool just to put these little marks in. That's all we want. Is this right, Paul? <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's it. I'm just making sure I'm on the right side, but it really doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, that'll do. Right. Yes, it has to. Of course, it has to be on the back. You have to be working on the back of the plate. OK, so then I need my. Um, this one, this would be good. And just lightly just put a little mark on these. Yeah. So just a little mark on these bits so we know where the white work's going to be. That bit and that bit. OK. And then we've got some little bits in here as well. This is quite good, actually, because it gives you some orientation in a minute when you're going to do the white work, doesn't it? That's it. It's good. Lay it's a good um, it's for laying it up. That's quite good. So let's have a look. We've got another little bit there. Did I miss any? I've got that bit there. Look, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit, that bit. Right, there's another one there. Got a bit there, two bits there and that. Right, that's that one done. And then we'll move to the second plate. The second ball, that's got to be there. Right, 
Okay. Second twiggy bauble. So, yeah, could be easy. This. So how do you know? <laughs> how do you know if that's the ball? Do you do one at a time then, Paul? Is that what we're saying? I don't know. Here's like that. At the end of each, press the gel pen into the groove and trace that so you jump out. Right. Do one bauble at a time, I reckon. Otherwise, I can't see how you're going to do that. Okay, back in. Relocate. Yeah, otherwise you won't know how to, where to put the bauble, will you? Okay, back it goes. Relocate. Do one bauble at a time. That's what I say. There. Okay. Right. Are we happy, people? Don't tell me you've all left me. Don't be leaving the building. I'm good at this, really. Right, so now, and here comes the magic bit. Are you ready? So what we're going to do now is take our pen, pink pen, for example. We stick with what Paul's done. And we're going to, what we're looking for is this. So we're going to get actually in the groove. And we're going to trace out the images. Let's do one bauble at a time. So we've done our little white bits. And now we're going to trace out. Okay. Right, let's give it a go. And let's see if this little pen's working now. Yeah, lovely. So trick number one, tip number one, go slowly. For this to work, you need to go slowly. You're on the right side of the plate, right on the back. And what you're going to do is literally, you're working on the front of the, the parchment. This is the front. But you're embossing on the front by running the pen into Right. So you're going to get in there and you're going to run the pen. Let me get it. You've got to warm it up, get it started. Right. And you're going to run the pen in the groove like this. So get your pen. Right. Off we go. When it warms up, it's easier. So you just get the pen in the groove. Go slowly. There you go. Now it's starting to warm up. Slowly does it. Slowly does it. So if you go too fast, it doesn't give the ink a chance to work. See, I'm going too fast. So round we go again. It's easy because you just go back and then just drop the pink in. See? It's really nice. Really nice, really easy to do. I think Paul's better at this than me. No, he's not. Here we go. Right, round we go. See, and as soon as I go too fast, it won't work. So let's just get this. This is nice. What an easy way to work, eh? And if you jump out, not that I have, but if you jump out of the groove with your pen, if you've got a white eraser, a white Faber-Castell eraser, just wait till the ink is dry and then just erase it. Just get rid of it. The white, it's an ink eraser, isn't it? So it works well. Oh, like that. There you go. Move the artwork around and then just start. You see this okay? There you go. That's nice. Isn't it? So maybe I'll if you if it's all right with you, because it's already ten to eight. So what I'll do is I'll just do one of the baubles because once you've done one, it's obvious, isn't it? What you've got to do to the second one. You just move over. And then go again. Ah, see, now my pen's warmed up. I'm off and running. Actually, is it that, that it's actually warmed up or that I've... Yeah, that's what it is, you know. Look at that. Because I did try it earlier. Oh, slipped out. I did try it earlier. And it worked fine. 
But now the pen's got cold, I guess, up here. It's like a fridge up here. There you go. It's quite good, isn't it? Do you see? I think I want to put a bit more pink in that 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 one there. Yeah, nice. So you just move your artwork around, eh? And then let's have a look. In you go. And then you just slowly. I think it also helps if you keep your pen upright. Eh? Yeah. You definitely want to keep your pen upright. I think a little bit of practice as well. Oh, I know it slid. Hold on. Let me get my. Let me get it in the right place. Yeah, I'm liking this, but I do need to get this in the right place. See, that's the thing. There's no rush, is there? So once you've done this, right, off we go. Right. I'm learning as I'm going as well how to hold the pen. Um, now it's better. Yeah, you see, you get in the groove and then you see how it works best. So if you lean over a bit, that helps. You lean into the, yeah, see? It's almost like you're leaning into the groove and then it's, yeah, I'm on it now. Keep the pen at a bit of an angle, maybe, rather than upright, eh? Got it now. Paul tells me that the pinky razor works as well. Well, good. That's good to know. Yeah, and I'll tell you what I've just figured out, is that rather than hold the pen upright, that works on the little bits, but on the runs, on the long runs, hold the pen at a bit of an angle, like drag it down the track, if you see what I mean. See? Paul, you got anything to add to this? Am I missing anything obvious? Hmm? I think this is pretty good. I must say it's very enjoyable. And it looks beautiful when it's done. Mm -hmm. And then when we've done this, what we'll do is, we'll pretend we've done the second one as well. Okay. We'll pretend we've done the second one as well. And then we'll do the next stage. Oh. <laughs> ah. That'll do. Paul said, I haven't missed a thing. Well, happy days. Right, there you go. So that, for example, is for a first attempt, Barbara, I would be pretty impressed with that. Okay. So let's have a look. I go like that. Oh, yeah. There you go. Good as. Look, isn't that lovely? What an easy way to get a really good effect, see? Isn't that nice? So now what we want to do, there you go, there's, there's that one. Now, fast forward, blink and you miss it. We've got all of it. So you can do the second bauble quite easily, you know, don't you? But what we have to do is do the white work here. So we're going to finish the white work and put the words in place. So that's the only thing that we still need to, to cover here. Well, let's have a look. What's he said? This is like the project club. I hope you're going to join after all this. Let's have a look. Use the number two tool to like we've done that. Press the gel pen into the groove and trace out slowly. If you jump out of the groove and mark the parchment, use an eraser pen, we've done it. Turn over to the back. Add white work to the dots. Add the sentiment. Okay. Okay. So if we want to add, have you got a, um, a soft mat? Have you got one? Have you got a soft mat? Let me just grab my pink 
Let me just grab my pink mat because. Oh, hello. Oh, it's such a mess in here. All right, then. Right, pink mat or or black mat, whatever you've got. Okay. Either works, really, doesn't it? A4 black mat. That's the only thing I'm missing here is an A4 black mat. I've only got an A3 black mat. But that's okay. This is going to work. Right, let's put this to one side for a minute. Just put this to one side. And then what we need, I need the soft side, see, of the mat. So we've done that, we've done that. <laughs> see, on the black mat at the back, it's soft. So we could use that. Or we can use the pink one. Let's compare. Just in case there's somebody that says, well, what's the difference? Well, in the starter kit, for example, you get the black mat, don't you? Okay. So now I've turned it round and it's it's soft. It's spongy. Okay. So if I want to, I can take our, I mean, where, where Paul's gone, right? Let's put this one here and this one here. So this is the front, right? We're definitely on the front. Otherwise, you won't be able to read that. We are going to need the plate in a minute again, but let's just do the dots first because this will establish how hard we press. So let's see. If we, we've got to work on the back now to do this, to push it forward. So we gave ourselves a little, little guide, didn't we? So we've got a three, a four, we've got a two and a one. So for example, you're going to use the either the three, if you can get the three in there, Right, we'll put the three in like that, and we're going to push the. There you go. So you're stretching now, but you're stretching it back out the other way again. So we could do that one. So really, they're quite small. I'm going to use the number two. So you can use the black mat to do this, yeah, but you're working from the back now and you're pushing it out to the front. So Let's just have a look. These are only tiny little white dots, but they make quite a difference. They're quite pretty when they're done. So you're just going to stretch the parchment back to the front. So working from the back, just push that parchment back out to the front. There you go. North, south, east, west, and around the houses. Right, let's have a look and turn that over so you can see it's starting. It's really nice. It's actually got quite a nice effect because you get a really fine line. I don't know if you can see that. It's quite clever, that. I quite like that look. I'll show you in a minute. Let's go back to the back. Right, because we've pushed it, we've pushed it one way and now we're pushing it back the other way, you get a really cool little hairline. Let me show you. I bet if I keep embossing, I'll lose that hairline. If you find, when you, when you start parching though, if you find that the black mat is a little bit too spongy for you, you've got choices. You, do, you could do several things. For example, you could take a, a, a piece of poly bag like this and put this underneath, single, single, like a single piece would do the job. And then when you press, this kind of resists so it's not quite so spongy you know you put a layer of like a, just a poly bag and th what you'll find is that stops you going too um too heavy and possibly going through the parchment okay but if you the other thing that you can do is if you prefer excuse me a minute you can take the pink mat see because uh, the pink mat is something that a lot of parchers like, right? Because it's more forgiving. It's not as spongy. So now, again, we're still working on the back. But what you'll find is now when you, yeah, see, as soon as you do that, you can feel the resistance. It's like you, you're not going through that. There is no way you're going to punch of the parchment once you're using the pink mat. So it's a real good thing. When you turn it over, if I put the red behind it, you can see how white that's getting now, can't you? Now, let me see if you can see what I mean by the little halo. If I come in tight, I mean, it's neither here nor there. It's just little things. But can you see the little outline? 
it's like a little it's really lovely actually it's quite nice but i bet if i go if i keep going i'll get rid of it but that's the question do i even want to get rid of it but there you go so what we do is we let it sit for a little while then we go again we let the parchment relax then we go again and what you'll find is the white gets whiter every time you do it so that's how you get the lovely contrast let's have a look how white it is now shall we is that a dot as well what is now voila right let's have a look oh no it's red <laughs> hey that's interesting see doesn't matter how hard you press look check it out how hard i pressed on the top there the white won't come through the ink see mm. right so that's good to know too okay so we've done that and we've done that now the, the last thing we need to do is put the peace out christmas on so to do that see to me this is one of the best things about the groovy system is words because trying to write trying to write freehand you know unless you've got amazing calligraphy skills or handwriting it could completely destroy a really nice piece of artwork you know i've, I've seen that so many times and i think oh you know should have used the stamp <laughs> or now a groovy plate but let's have a look so here we've got merry christmas down here let's come let's come up a bit i'll come out a bit actually just bear with me a minute let me come out a little bit right merry christmas i just want to move this book because it's stopping the flow right that'll do so this is what we want to do and in order to do that we've got to we're working from behind right we want to write peace at Christmas. So peace is here. Peace is here. So we turn that round. Peace is up here. So you can see, uh, I always would write. So we're working on the back again. So we're, we're writing back to front. See, as if it weren't challenging enough, making it look good. Imagine trying to do it freehand. Right. And then back to front as well. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why I'm all in favour of using um, groovy plates. And the other thing is, with this grid plate, mate, what I like about the grid plate, mate, too, is there are so many, so many lines everywhere, so you can align what you're doing. If you see what I mean, see. So I can, I can check my, I can check that it's all straight when I apply the, the writing. Okay, so we're working on the back and then it will be fine on the front. Number one tool, I would probably, if I could find it, I'd probably give myself a bit more slick and then I'll go. Right, so we're going to do piece first. Have a look. This is really a lovely, a lovely font as well. So let's have a look at this. So round we go, take your time and then we'll just... It's a really lovely scripty font. And we'll just bring that up. Round we go. Number one tool. That's it. It's good enough. Okay. Right, peace. That's it. So we'll turn that round. Let's have a look. Yeah. Even spelt right. <laughs> There you go. So we've got peace, right? Now let's put Christmas in. I would go to Christmas next and then at. So Christmas next, just as we did with the stamping. So we're working from the back again. So we've got Christmas. We can see what it's going to look like. Pop that into place. A right, bit of tumble dryer sheet. Yeah, I'm a big fan of... Um, definitely a big fan of um, fonts, alphabets, you know, what a difference that makes to your finished artwork. Right, there's a C. 
And if you miss a bit or you're not happy, you know, when you go, you just, it just slots back in. It's not, it doesn't mean you can't go back and amend. I spend my life editing things, going back and touching it up again and looking again. Did I get it right? Did I miss a bit? Don't you? So there you go. As far as this week goes, um, Sunday, 3 to 5, we're on telly. So tomorrow's already Friday. Golly. Monday, you know, of course, there's no shack on Monday because I'm off to New York, New York. Um, so there'll be no shack Monday. No shack. Oh, then you've got Paul on Tuesday. Paul, if I'm not mistaken, you're on television on Wednesday, aren't you, on the ODS? But I'm sure you'll tell our friends on Tuesday at 10 o'clock. Yeah, I'm spending a week in New York with Grace and Mark, which will be nice. And then, um, and then I, I won't be back until the Thursday after. So it won't be... So I'm missing in action. I'm, I'm, gone, I'm going AWOL um, next Monday and Thursday, no shack although Paul will be in on Tuesday, and then the following Monday, no shack. But on the Thursday, then we'll get together. I think that's right. And then I'll have loads to tell you. I'll have loads to tell you. I'll tell you all about New York. And on Wednesday, is that right, Paul? Right, Wednesday, I think what I'm reading between the lines here is that Paul's doing uh, a special, you know, this grid starter kit that we're using here. I think Paul's doing a special... ODS on television using the grid starter kit. Is that right, Paul? I think that's what I'm reading between the lines here. Right. We've got at, still got to put at in. So let's make sure that everything's in place. It's an ingenious system, really, this, isn't it? So I can see exactly where it's going to sit. Right. So now I'll just make sure that I'm happy with that. Lock in with the groovy tabs. There you go. Thank you very much, Paul, for helping me this evening. And thank you very much also, Paul, for giving us a lovely project to work towards. That helped a lot, I have to tell you. Um, I really enjoy just following instructions like this rather than having to come up with things for myself. And I think that's the power of the Project Club as well, isn't it? Yeah, so, so one of the best things about this this particular grid plate mate by Josie is that it just offers up you know I, I've always found this when you're doing when you're doing work like this you can get beautiful designs but unless there's a frame or an outside edge or or a liner or corners it's quite difficult it's quite daunting without a frame and so to have a built-in frame like that then you put anything inside it can't you and and you know the other thing is the, these are great. This is great for, and I'm sure that Paul will show you how you can. This is great for cutting out as well, pico cutting. So that's worth bearing in mind. Now let's have a look, and then we can we can call it a day. So we've got our our lovely piece at Christmas. We've learnt how to go into the groove on the front. Let's have a look. Let's just take, just let it. There you go. So we've gone into the groove on the front to decorate those baubles. So, you know, we could have done it the other way around. Think about this. We could have done the writing with the pens and we could have done the baubles um, in the white. And that would have been pretty cool. We could have done, we could have completely reversed this and done these little dots in red and the writing in red and then done the baubles. I bet that'd be lovely too. I look forward to seeing what you come up with and pasting it all over Groovy Worldwide and Clarity Worldwide, you know. I think that's the thing about our community. We, we, we hang together and together we are better. So, so it was lovely to catch you uh, this evening. I hope that you enjoyed that. We've still got a hundred and, I can't even see, 160 odd people in the room. Wow. Okay. Thanks for your company. Thanks for your help, Paul. Uh, writing won't work with the pens as it's backwards. Ah, writing won't work with the pens as it's backwards. 
writing won't work with the ah but okay so writing won't work with the pens as it's backwards because you are getting in the groove with the pen but you could i wonder if you could just trace it out so you've got the writing now you don't know until you try i wonder if i could just trace it out let's just see maybe maybe not i hate to, i should do this when i'm on my own but i wonder if i could take the pen and write out actually write out the without going in do you see what i mean i wonder if i could use the the pen i think paul had the better idea though don't you i mean you could do it like this yeah you certainly could you could do it the traditional way and write it out on the front just as i have so you're, you're using the plate to trace out i'll tell you what though forget that <laughs> that's the way to do it friends i think so anyway lots of love have a good evening and thank you for joining me paul thanks for your help and uh yeah i'll see you in a couple of weeks time go easy and uh enjoy the rest of your evening bye bye now <laughs>